Talk to about this new partnership with SpaceX. What does it mean? Oh, well, we're really excited about it. I mean, obviously, I'm a big space enthusiast. I love everything they're doing at SpaceX right now. Um, you know, a lot of people know them for putting uh, cargo and human beings in space. What they don't know is they're building out this broadband constellation network with, you know, tens of thousands of satellites to bring internet connectivity to some of the hardest places to reach on Earth. Um, you know, this is potentially like the second wave of cord cutting as people get rid of their cable modems and DSL and they embrace, you know, even faster broadband connectivity through satellites. Um, um, so we're excited to be able to power the payments for that. Um, we had a lot of other exciting things to talk about in the quarter, too. So it, it's not all SpaceX, but I know that's a big <laughs> How many payments are actually happening in space right now? I mean, isn't the market pretty non-existent? And how fast do you actually expect it to scale up? Well, I mean, I, the, the actual customers for Starlink are people here on Earth. Uh, so, you know, and, and really the world is the entire TAM. Uh, you're talking broadband internet capabilities in virtually every country. So some analysts think that they'll do over $100 billion a year. Uh, in subscription revenue, which um, is very, very exciting for us because, um, I mean, that would be a substantial lift. We, we touch about a quarter of a trillion uh, in payments a year, so that's a pretty big lift. But in space and broad general, look, space is a huge TAM. Uh, there will be an economy in TAM. That's why people, or there will be an economy in space. That's why people are putting, or investing so much capital into what uh, this, the future of space could hold. Um, we, we certainly hope to play a part in it, uh, you know, as, as much as we play a part on in global commerce here on Earth. And before we talk a little bit more about space, talk to us about, give us the update on your commerce efforts and payments efforts here on Earth. You know, where, where is the company and, and how are you positioned right now going into 2022? Oh, I mean, we're growing really fast. I mean, uh, you know, we met all of our expectations for uh, Q3. We grew payment volume 90% year over year. We reaffirmed our 2021 guidance and we set, you know, midterm guidance for the next three years, an outlook of, you know, 50% plus year over year growth. And when you do as much volume as us, that, that's pretty hard to hit. Uh, it means we're a share taker. You know, one in three restaurants and hotels in the country use shift forward payment technology. A lot of the, the stadiums you love to go to to watch a game and order a beer and a burger power by shift for retailers, e-commerce, gaming, and, uh, and now we have some, uh, some interesting space-based uh, technology that we're able to, to contribute a very small part to with our payment services. There's so much focus on space tourism, but a lot of research still needs to happen in space. And St. Jude's uh, Hospital just, uh, you know, announced um, this new era of scientific discovery in, in, in this Inspiration for Advanced Research Center. Talk to us about why this continued research is still so important. Uh, it's such a good question. You know, some people think it's 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 one or the other. You can either ha you can either invest in, in our future in space, or we can invest in some of the problems we have here on Earth. And and I disagree. That was why with Inspiration Four, it was about you know addressing real problems that we have here on Earth, like childhood cancer and and, and children and families. They don't get an opportunity to grow up and experience anything like like what I've been fortunate enough to experience in life. That you can you can you know raise substantial funds for for a cause like that. We raised over a quarter of a billion dollars for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and still make progress for tomorrow in space because we have no idea what we could learn out there by satisfying our curiosity to you know explore the stars and just like as we climb the mountains and cross the oceans and what we could learn in space could change or alter humankind's life uh you know and destiny here on earth for the better so we have to be able to do both and that's why saint jude was such a big part of our mission um we were honored they unveiled the inspiration for advanced research center and and they're going to, you know, raise, um, you know, the survival rates of childhood cancer across the world from that center. Meantime, I have to ask you about this Russia anti-satellite weapons test, creating 1,500 pieces of debris, endangering astronauts on the ISS. What's your take on this? What does this tell you about the hazards of space travel? Yeah, I, I don't understand it at all, honestly. Um, it, 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 it's not hard to shoot down a satellite. Satellites, when, you know, orbital mechanics uh, would say that anything that's in orbit right now is essentially on railroad tracks. It's very predictable. Uh, I do not think that Russia or China or even the U.S. for that matter has to shoot one down uh, for people to know they can. So I, I really don't know what was accomplished here other than not just endangering human beings at the space station, but it, it destroys satellites. The debris will take out weather observation satellites, things that can predict, you know, storms here on Earth that, you know, could save lives as well. So I, I don't see the good out of it. And, and if there is a lot of kinetic activity in space, I mean, and satellites starting getting blown up, uh, it, it's going to really destroy uh, low Earth orbit and our ability to go and explore among the stars. And that's unfortunate. Yeah.